Thank you all for coming again. We've got a bigger crowd today. That's good. The book of Revelation, the next session here. Let's see, what session are we up to? One, two, three, four, five. It's the fifth session of the book of Revelation. Uh, we're up to the seven signs. We've gone through the letters to the seven churches, uh, the seven seals, seven trumpets, up to seven signs. Uh, any first, uh, any questions or discussions from the the seven trumpets last week? Okay, sorry, I don't have a joke to begin this this week, like I did last week. Uh, the first sign: a woman and a dragon. The dragon seeks to destroy a woman and her son. This is chapter twelve. Can't complain though, Bible Gateway is free. They just make you look at ads. A great portent appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of 12 stars. I'll go over these symbols in a minute after I get done reading. She was pregnant and was crying out in birth pangs in the agony of giving birth. Then another portent appeared in heaven, great red dragon with seven heads and ten horns and seven diadems on his heads. His tail swept down a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to earth. Then the dragon stood before the woman who was about to deliver a child so that he might devour her child as soon as it was born. And she gave birth to a son, a male child, who is to rule all the nations with a scepter of iron but her child was snatched away and taken to God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she has a place prepared by God so that there she can be nourished for 1,260 days. There's one of those magic numbers again. All right, so what about all of this? The woman. Now, some Christian interpreters have said, well, this is Mary, the mother of Jesus. The, uh, the people that John was writing to, being Jewish Christians, probably interpreted that a little bit more broadly, possibly referring to Israel from uh, whom the Messiah is born. Uh, the child obviously is the Messiah, right? So this woman maybe symbolizes Israel because that would make the 12 stars refer to the 12 tribes. That probably makes the symbolism fit a little bit better than just saying, well, this is Mary. Probably uh, Israel from which uh, the Messiah came. Dragon. Later in the chapter, verse 9, it, uh, this dragon is identified as the devil. It calls the, the dragon the devil. See also Leviathan. The devil uh, is we'll see is, or this dragon is identified with uh, prime, primeval chaos. Let's take a look at uh, Job and Isaiah. Again, going back to the Old Testament, the Hebrew Bible. The Jewish Christians that uh, John is writing to would have been familiar with all of these things, uh, Jewish symbolism, primeval chaos, the sea and other symbols of uh, the creation of the world. Can you draw out Leviathan with a fish hook or press down its tongue with a cord? Here, uh, uh, God is uh, uh, getting after Job for complaining. Uh, well, what do you know, Job? Can you, can you catch Leviathan from the sea with a fish hook? Or Isaiah, on that day, the Lord, with his cruel and great and strong sword, will punish Leviathan, the fleeing serpent, Leviathan, the twisting serpent, and he will kill the dragon that is in the sea. Leviathan was a symbol of primeval, primeval chaos, the chaos that was in the sea at the creation of the world. 
seven heads and ten horns. This sounds a lot like the symbolism in the, the apocalyptic portion of the book of Daniel. Daniel has two parts to it. The first six chapters are folk tales, like Daniel in the lion's den or the fiery furnace. Second six chapters are apocalyptic, like the book of Revelation. Uh, Ted was telling me, Ted Miller was telling me that, that, that his Bible study group on Monday nights is going through the book of Daniel now, and they're having quite a time of it. They're up to cha chapter 11, which is well into the apocalyptic part, all of the symbolism in, in there, the kings of the north and the kings of the south, and it's, um, that's, that's quite a challenge. So chapter 7 is the beginning of the uh, apocalyptic portion of, of Daniel. In the first year of King Belshazzar of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions in his head as he lay in bed. Then he wrote down the dream. I, Daniel, saw in my vision by night the four winds of heaven stirring up the great sea. There is the chaos again. And four great beasts came out of the sea different from one another. <coughs> Excuse me. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. And as, as I watched, its wings were plucked off and it was lifted up from the ground and made to stand on two feet like a human being, and a human mind was given to it. Another beast appeared, a second one that looked like a bear, it was raised up on one side and had three tusks in its mouth among its teeth and was told, arise, devour many bodies. After this I watched and another appeared like a leopard. The beast had four wings of a bird on its back and four heads, and, a, and dominion was given to it. After this I saw in the visions by night a fourth beast, terrifying and dreadful and exceedingly strong. It had great iron teeth and was, devour and was devouring, breaking in pieces and stamping what was left with its feet. It was different from all the beasts that preceded it and it had ten horns. I was considering the horns when another horn appeared, a little one that came up among them. Three of the original horns were plucked up from before it there were eyes like human eyes in this horn and a mouth speaking arrogantly. These beasts in Daniel, the, the author of Daniel is writing about, symbolic of the empires that uh, oppressed uh, the nation of Israel. And uh, this last beast was the, uh, the uh, empire of Alexander the Great. And all of these uh, horns were the descendants of uh, the rulers that followed after Alexander the Great. And this little horn uh, symbolizes a ruler called Antiochus IV Epiphanes, a very uh, brutal uh, ruler that slaughtered many, many Jews. He's uh, called a little horn as a derisive term for, for him. But anyway, that's a, a number of these images John borrows for the book of Revelation. Rule with an iron rod. This is about this, this child that was born to the woman. He's supposed to rule with an iron rod. This is from Psalm 2. Uh, Psalm 2, this speaks about a king of Israel. So apparently this child is destined to be a king. God says, I have set my king on Zion, my holy hill. I will tell of the decree of the Lord. He said to me, you are my son, today I have begotten you. Ask of me and I will make the nations your heritage and the kings of the earth your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron and dash them like pieces, in pieces like a potter's vessel. Snatched away, the child was snatched away before uh, the dragon could devour him, snatched away to God and his throne, may refer to Christ's resurrection and ascension, uh, thwarting the plans of the devil. And there's this number here, 1,260 days. 42 months, three and a half years. Three and a half is half of seven. Seven is the number of completeness or perfection. This is three and a half. Seven ha chopped in half, which would symbolize a radical incompleteness, possibly evil or something that is 
prevented from being finished. Continuing with the first sign of the woman and the dragon. So next, the archangel Michael conquers the dragon, the devil. <coughs> and a war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. The dragon and his angels fought back, but they were defeated. And there was no longer any place for them in heaven. The great dragon was thrown down, that ancient serpent who is called the devil and Satan. So here in verse 9, we learn who this dragon is. The deceiver of the whole world. He was thrown down to the earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven proclaiming, Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God, the authority of his Messiah. For the accuser of our brothers and sisters has been thrown down, who accuses them day and night before our God. But they have conquered him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. For they did not cling to life even in the face of death. Rejoice then, you heavens, and those who dwell in them. But woe to the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you in great wrath, because he knows that his time is short. Michael is the traditional champion of Israel. Let's take a look at Daniel 10 for a word about that. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia opposed me. Now, the, the background. This is the angel Gabriel speaking to Daniel. Okay. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia opposed me 21 days. So Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I left him there with the prince of the kingdom of Persia. And later, then he said, do you know why I have come to you? Now I must return to fight against the prince of Persia. And when I am through with him, the prince of Greece will come. But I, I am to tell you what is inscribed in the book of truth. There is no one with me who contends against these princes except Michael, your prince. So apparently Michael is sort of like the guardian angel of Israel, according to this passage in Daniel. Rejoice, it says. Now, heaven rejoices, but remember Revelation says that woe to the earth because now the devil's down here. So the re rejoicing in Psalms and Isaiah is a little bit different. Uh, I skipped it. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. So here are both heavens and heavens, heaven and earth rejoices. And in Isaiah, sing for joy, O heavens, and exult, O earth. Break forth, O mountains, into singing, for the Lord has comforted his people and will have compassion on his suffering ones. At first, I was going to uh, reference that hymn, uh, and the, the earth breaks forth in singing, uh, the clap your hands, and, and what, what are the words? But then I thought, well, that doesn't really fit the words of Revelation because the, the earth isn't supposed to rejoice with the devil down here amongst us. So I didn't add a reference to that hymn. Then the dragon vainly pursues the woman, tries to catch her, but he's unsuccessful. So when the dragon had been thrown, so when the dragon saw that he had been thrown down to the earth, he pursued the woman who had delivered the male child. But the woman was given the two wings of the great eagle, so that she could fly from the serpent into the wilderness, to her place where she is nourished for a time, two times, and half a time. There's that number again: a time, a time times two and half a time so that's three and a half there's that three and a half again right then from his mouth the serpent poured water like a river after the woman to sweep her away with the flood 
But the earth came to the help of the woman. It opened its mouth and swallowed the river that the dragon had poured from his mouth. Then the dragon was angry with the woman and went off to wage war on the rest of her children, those who keep the commandments of God and hold the testimony of Jesus. The eagle, let's take a look at a verse from Exodus. You have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now it's time for a hymn reference. <laughs> ELW number 787. And he will raise you up on eagles' wings, bear you on the breath of dawn, make you to shine like the sun, and hold you in the palm of his hand. That fits both, uh, both references, both the Exodus reference and the Revelation reference. Water and flood, uh, the primeval chaos again, pouring from the mouth of the dragon. I have two references here, but I've already read the one from Isaiah about Leviathan. So I'll just, uh, maybe I'll skip that one then, because we've already read the Leviathan version. So let's, um, let's read the psalm. Uh, On that day the Lord with his cruel and great and strong sword will punish Leviathan, the fleeing servant, Leviathan, twisting servant. He, well, let's see, I've got another one here. Uh, you divided the sea by your might. You broke the heads of the dragons in the waters. Again, referring to the primeval chaos in the sea. You know, the, uh, Israel, even though it had a, a coastline, was never a seafaring people. They were not like the Phoenicians, which were great sea, uh, seafaring people and did, traded a lot by the sea. Israel never was. It, there's a lot in the Hebrew Bible about fear of the sea and the chaos and turmoil of, of the sea at creation until God tamed it. Um, so that, that shows up a lot in, in uh, Hebrew scriptures. The earth swallowing the river. Who is like you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in splendor, doing wonders? You stretched out your right hand, the earth swallowed them. And of course, the rest of her children that the dragon is pursuing now that he can't get at the the child anymore, uh, those are the brothers and sisters in Christ, the rest of the children of Israel. Okay, the second sign, the beast from the sea. We've seen the dragon, now the beast from the sea. Then the dragon took his stand on the sand of the seashore. And I saw a beast rising out of the sea with ten horns and seven heads. And on its horns were ten diadems, and on its heads were blasphemous names. And the beast that I saw was like a leopard. Its feet were like a bear's, and its mouth was like a lion's mouth. This again, symbolism sounds a lot like Daniel. And the dragon, that's the devil, gave it his power and his throne and great authority. One of its heads seemed to have received a death blow but its fatal wound had been healed. In amazement, the whole earth followed the beast. They worshiped the dragon, for he had given his authority to the beast, and they worshiped the beast, saying, who is like the beast and who can fight against it? The beast was given a mouth speaking arrogant and blasphemous words. Again, this sounds like the little horn in Daniel. And it was allowed to exercise authority for 42 months. There's that number again, three and a half years. Don't take that literally. It's um, an evil time. 
It opened its mouth to speak blasphemies against God, blaspheming his name and his dwelling, that is, those who dwell in heaven. Also, it was allowed to wage war on the saints and to conquer them. It was given authority over every tribe and people and language and nation, and all the inhabitants of the earth will worship it. Everyone whose name has not been written from the foundation of the world in the book of life of the lamb that was slaughtered. Let anyone who has an ear listen. If you are to be taken captive, into captivity you go. If you kill with the sword, with the sword you must be killed. Here is a call for the endurance and faith of the saints. <coughs> this beast from the sea represents the Roman Empire which apparently, according to John, received its authority from the devil. The sea, again, is primeval chaos. These heads represent the em emperors of the Roman Empire. Blasphemous names. The emperors were worshipped as gods ever since Augustus. Uh, they were considered to be sons of God. Jesus was spoken of as the Son of God. Well, if Jesus is the Son of God, the emperor was not. That was a political statement as well as a religious statement back then. One of its heads received a death blow, but had been healed. A couple of things this could mean. Julius Caesar was assassinated, but that did not destroy the Roman Empire. So this death blow could be the assassination of Julius Caesar. Now, that doesn't exactly fit because at the time of Julius, Rome was not an empire, an empire, it was a republic. So Julius Caesar was not an emperor. Okay, well, Nero was an emperor and he committed suicide. So maybe the, this death blow referred to, the, referred to the suicide of Nero. Well, uh, that could be true because the suicide of Nero did not destroy the empire either. So the empire was healed even after the suicide of Nero. I don't know. See, sometimes, despite our best efforts, these, symbol, these symbols, we just can't quite put a finger on it. So, you know, we have to, we have to leave them alone sometimes. Given, over, given authority over every tribe. Well, that obviously speaks to the power of the Roman Empire. It was widespread at that time. Killed with the sword. So I have to reference a few scripture readings. Jeremiah chapters 15 and 43, and of course Matthew 26, the famous saying of Jesus. And when they say to you, where shall we go? You shall say to them, thus says the Lord, those destined for pestilence to pestilence, and those destined for the sword to the sword, those destined for famine to famine, those destined for captivity to captivity. And again, he shall come and ravage the land of Egypt, giving those who are destined for pestilence to pestilence. Well, you get the idea. Then Jesus said to him, put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will die by the sword. The third sign, the beast from the earth. So we all have already met the beast from the sea that represents the Roman Empire and all of the heads that represent the emperor. beast from the earth. Then I saw another beast that rose out of the earth. It had two horns like a lamb and it spoke like a lion, like a dragon. It exercises all of the authority of the first beast on its behalf and it makes the earth and its inhabitants worship the first beast whose fatal wound had been healed. It performs great signs, even making fire come down from heaven to earth in the sight of all. And by the signs that it is allowed to perform on behalf of the beast, it deceives the inhabitants of the earth, telling them to make an image for the beast that had been wounded by the sword and yet lived. 
and it was allowed to give breath to the image of the beast so that the image of the beast could even speak and cause those who would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. Also, it causes all, both small and great, both rich and poor, both slave and free, to be given a brand on the right hand or the forehead so that no one can buy or sell who does not have the brand, that is, the name of the beast or the number for its name. This calls for wisdom. Let anyone with understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number for a person. Its number is 666. Make the earth worship the first beast. This is the first of the emperor cult, worshiping all of the heads of the first beast, all of the emperors. I mean, at that time, they even constructed temples to all of the emperors. Uh, people would go in and, and worship dead emperors. It was as if today, you know, we have the Washington Monument and the Lincoln Memorial. Imagine if people went in there and actually worshiped those people. Well, that's what they did. Deceived. Both uh, Matthew and 2 Thessalonians have some words about that. For false messiah, messiahs and false prophets will appear and produce great signs and wonders to lead astray, if possible, even the elect. 2 Thessalonians. The coming of the lawless one is apparent in the working of Satan, who uses all powers, all power, signs, and lying wonders, in every kind of wicked deception for those who are perishing because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved. Uh, we read about the image in Revelation. They made statues of deified emperors. So this, the image is speaking of, they, they treated them like idols, the statue of the deified emperor. Marked, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, this is an, an ironic imitation of the sealing of God's servant, servants. You remember back in chapter seven. Um, I saw another angel ascending from the rising of the sun with the seal of the living God. And he called out with a loud voice to the four angels who had been given power to damage earth and sea saying, do not damage the earth or the sea or the trees until we have marked the servants of our God with a seal on their foreheads. And I heard the number of those who were sealed, 144,000 sealed out of every tribe of the people of Israel. Well, this is sort of a, of a mockery of that sealing of the chosen. So, so what is this mark of the beast? I have a personal theory, and you can take it or leave it. Okay, this is my personal theory. There are a couple of clues here. No one can buy or sell without it. And on the right hand and the forehead, or the forehead. Now, there are these things in Judaism called phylacteries. They're little boxes that have scraps of scripture in them, and they're worn around the head with the box on the forehead. The other one's worn around the left arm. Now no, notice there's a difference here. One of them's on the forehead, but the other is mentioned the right hand. Well, that gives me an idea. And if I'm right, I have some marks of the beast in my pocket right now. Let me show you one. Here's a mark of the beast, and it even has a picture of one of our emperors on it. This, this one happens to be George Washington. But <coughs> people that have bought into the empire, they think about these things all the time, how to acquire them. It's on the, it's on the forefront of their minds all the time, right? How can I get more of these? How can, I, uh, how can I accumulate them symbolically on my forehead? 
If I'm not thinking about how to acquire them, I'm thinking about how to spend them. Apologies to the lefties in the audience, but John's using the common usage is when we buy or sell, we use our right hands. Anyway, that, that's my idea. You can take it or leave it. And, and if you don't have a mark of the beast, in our empire, you're basically an unperson, a non-person, right? Maybe even living in a tent on the street someplace. You, you, it's hard to exist in our empire without a mark of the beast. Anyway, just my idea. The number of the beast is the number of a person. The number is 666, and it, it, John says, those with wisdom, use your, it requires knowledge to calculate the number of the beast. So let's use our wisdom and knowledge to calculate the number of the beast right now. Most scholars think that the beast is the Emperor Nero. This requires um, the knowledge that, uh, well, let's take a step back. Everybody here knows Roman numerals, right? Where, where letters of the uh, Roman alphabet stand for numbers. Well, that, you know, until the West adopted Arabic numerals, that's the way it was always done. Uh, we have a different character set for values, numerical values, than we do for letters, right? But back then, in Latin, they used letters for numerical values, and that's the way it was done in Greek, and that's the way it was done in Hebrew. So I found a chart giving the numerical values for each of the Hebrew letters. Okay. Don't worry, there won't be a test on this. But I'm going to refer to this. I'm going to go back and pull numbers out of this chart in just a minute. Uh, most scholars think that the, the second beast was, the, uh, was Nero. So let, let's look at this. Nero Caesar, or Caesar, Caesar Nero, it doesn't matter what order you put them in. Addition is commutative. Now, the people that, that John was writing to were Jewish Christians living in Asia Minor. Asia Minor was a Greek-speaking territory. It was ever since Alexander the Great conquered the territory, hundreds of years before John was writing. <clears throat> so these people would have spoken Greek in their day-to-day -day lives. They would have known Hebrew if they had a Jewish background. So they would have referred, they would have known Nero Caesar by his Greek name, Neron Kaiser. Now, let's write Neron Kaiser using Hebrew letters. Hebrew reads right to left instead of left to right. So let's use, this, use Hebrew characters to write Neron Kaiser. There won't be a test over this either. But this is roughly now, I should point out, my, my computer doesn't have an ancient Hebrew character set. So these are more modern Hebrew letters. It, it still works. Now, uh, referring back to the chart on my previous slide, let's take the numerical values for these Hebrew letters and plug those in. Now all that remains is to add them up. So that's why most scholars think that this beast and his number referred to Nero. I don't know. That's just what I've read. But that's how it works out. OK, I don't know if I can ask, answer any questions about this, because I've uh, exhausted my knowledge about this. But I, I'll take a shot if anybody has any, any questions about this. Modern evil people, it, it, it's 666, yeah. 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 I heard that somehow some iteration of Hitler works. You've 
heard, you heard that Hitler comes out to be 60. Yeah, yeah, you told me about that last night. I tried my best to make Adolf Hitler come out to be 666, and, and, and it doesn't. <laughs> I did try it in Hebrew. Yes. That would be the ultimate. I know it would. I know it would. It comes out to be something like 756. Yeah, Adolf Hitler is too long. <laughs> How about Donald Trump? Oh, <laughs> I'll have to try that when I get home. <laughs> okay, moving on. The fourth sign. Oh, oh, yeah, Larry. Let's, let, 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 let's see if I can go back here. Okay, uh, now, what was that? Why the code? Well, I think they were trying to, John was probably, probably trying to hide his reference to uh, Nero as this evil beast. Uh, I think I think he was probably trying to avoid this letter getting confiscated and destroyed by the Romans. That's my guess. Yes. Yes. Let, let me, let me, I, I don't, I don't know if I can repeat all of that. Maybe I can't either. <laughs> um, numerology is very widespread in Judaism and uh, as has been shown here, the letters function as numbers. And it had maybe more than one purpose, one of which was to disguise and hide from the outsiders who may have a political reaction to this, but it also pr probably probed uh, another level of reality for the insiders who know. And so numerology, I think, had a, should we call it a mystical probing of reality as well, in some sense? And of course, you see it here. Well, I think you're right, and we could get into Kabbalah and things like that, of course. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's true. Okay. I got to put away my mark of the beast. I know you'd take it. It's just a Washington. It's just an Emperor Washington, though. <laughs> okay, the fourth sign. Oh, I gotta hurry up. I've only got 20 minutes left. And we're only up to the fourth sign. Okay. Uh, uh, the lamb with the chosen. Then I looked and there was the lamb standing on Mount Zion and with him were 144,000 who had his name and his father's name written on their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven like the sound of many waters and like the sound of loud thunder. And the voice I heard was like the sound of harpists playing on their harps. And they sing a new song before the throne and before the four living creatures and before the elders. No one could learn that song except the 144,000 who have been redeemed from the earth. It is these who have not defiled themselves with women, for they are virgins. These follow the lamb wherever he goes. They have been redeemed from humankind as first fruits for God and the lamb, and in their mouth no lie was found. They are blameless. 
I'm glad we got to this part because there are a couple of points I want to make about this. First, Mount Zion, Jerusalem was the center of God's reign. Uh, I mean, as far as the, the Jewish people were concerned, God was going to uh, break into history at the end time and establish his reign uh, in Jerusalem. Uh, 144,000, those who had been sealed or protected, that's a reference back to chapter 7. Uh, I'll, I'll skip reading that in the interest of time. You remember that, the 144, 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes of Israel. Uh, the reference to a new song, uh, that's from Psalm 98. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have gotten him victory. Of course, there's an obvious hymn reference, ELW 731. Refrain, God has done marvelous things. I too sing praises with the new song. I've uh, got to mention, don't try this at home. Loud boiling test tubes. If you're... If, if you're boiling test tubes loud enough for you to hear them, they're going to shatter and splash scalding liquid all over you. So don't do that. Virgins, these um, 144,000 are virgins. This is metaphorical. Let's look at uh, Jeremiah and Ezekiel, and then I'll mention a couple other references. Often, very often in biblical literature, uh, marital fidelity is used as a metaphor for faithfulness uh, to God. She saw that for all the adulteries of that faithless one Israel, I had sent her away with a degree, decree of divorce, yet her false sister Judah did not fear, but she also went and prostituted herself. This is about the nations of Israel and Judah uh, being unfaithful to God, but it, it's cast in terms of adultery. Uh, Jeremiah, for they have committed adultery and blood is on their hands. With their idols they have committed adultery and they have even offered them, offered up to them for food the children whom they had borne to me. Uh, so this is uh, metaphors of um, adultery meaning being unfaithful to God. And you, you also read the, um, the prophet Hosea uh, deliberately married an unfaithful woman so that he would know what God felt like when Israel was unfaithful to God. Um, Jesus once said to the Pharisees, you adulterous generation, meaning not literally adultery, but being unfaithful to God, not following God. So uh, when you read about uh, the, the virginity of these 144,000, we have to be careful about reading that literally. It does, it does feel... What does this have to do with that? And how does this speak to uh, the tribes that are trying to be faithful and are not allowed to be faithful? And on, 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 on. It, it, is, it is tough to read these things, to read about all this chaos in this book and then look at the chaos in the world you have to ask, what does this, how does this all fit together? How, what does this all mean? Yeah, that's very true. Yeah. Oh, everybody's looking for answers. 
Yeah. Yeah. What what does this mean? Yeah, that's a good Lutheran question. Fifth sign, three angels proclaim judgment. Then I saw another angel flying in mid heaven with an eternal gospel to proclaim those who live on earth to every nation and tribe and language and people. He said in a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory, for the hour of his judgment has come, and worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and the springs of water. Then another angel, a second, followed, saying, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the great. She has made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her prostitution. Then another angel, a third, followed them, crying with a loud voice, Those who worship the beast and its image and receive the brand on their foreheads or on their hands, they will also drink the wine of God's wrath, poured unmixed into the cup of his anger, and they will be tormented with fire and sulfur in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment goes up forever and ever. There is no rest day or night for those who worship the beast and its image and for anyone who receives the brand of its name. Here is a call for the endurance of the saints, those who keep the commandments of God and hold fast to the faith of Jesus. And I heard a voice from heaven saying, write this, blessed are the dead who from now on die in the Lord. Yes, says the spirit, they will rest from their labors for their deeds follow them. The hour has come, meaning judgment is imminent. Fallen is Babylon. Babylon is a symbolic name for Rome. As Babylon oppressed the Jewish people, Rome is oppressing the faithful, Jews and Christians alike. Wine of her prostitution. Let's look at uh, Jeremiah 51. Babylon was a golden cup in the Lord's hand, making all the earth drunken. The nations drank of her wine, and so the nations went mad. Wine of God's wrath, Jeremiah 25. For thus the Lord, the God of Israel, said to me, Take from my hand this cup of the wine of wrath, and make all the nations to whom I send you drink it. They shall drink and stagger and go out of their minds because of the sword that I am sending among them. The sixth sign, the final judgment of God. Then I looked and there was a white cloud and seated on the cloud was one like the Son of Man with a golden crown on his head and a sharp sickle in his hand. And another angel came out of the temple, calling with a loud voice to the one who sat on the cloud, Use your sickle and reap, for the hour to reap has come, because the harvest of the earth is fully ripe. So the one who sat on the cloud swung his sickle over the earth, and the earth was reaped. Then another angel came out of the temple in heaven, and he too had a sharp sickle. Then another angel came out from the altar, the angel who has authority over fire. And he called with a loud voice to him who had the sharp sickle. Use your sharp sickle and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, for its grapes are ripe. So the angel swung his sickle over the earth and gathered the vintage of the earth, and he threw it into to the great, great winepress of the wrath of God. And the winepress was trodden outside the city and blood flowed from the winepress as high as a horse's bridle for a distance of about 1,600 stadia. White cloud and son of man. Those are words from Daniel 7. As I watched in the night visions, I saw one like a human being. Well, the Aramaic words uh, are literally I saw one like a son of man coming with the clouds of heaven and he came to the ancient one and was presented before him. 
ancient one. Aramaic is literally ancient of days. Uh, sickle and clusters of the vine. This is es eschatological harvest. That's a $20 word meaning dealing with the end times. This is the harvest of the souls at the end of the age. For more, Joel chapter 3. Put in the sickle, for the har harvest is ripe. Go in, tread, for the winepress is full. The vats overflow, for their wickedness is great. Winepress, blood flowed. The um, uh, juxtaposition between, uh, the, the, uh, between wine and blood is common in biblical literature. We can talk about both uh, Genesis and Deuteronomy here. But this is, this is uh, the Song of Moses, uh, or the, no, it's um, the um, Jacob blessing his sons, and this is about his son Judah. Binding his foal to the vine and his donkey's uh, colt to the choice vine, he washes his garments in wine and his, his robe in the blood of grapes. That's, grape juice is called blood here. Curds from the herd and milk from the flock, flock with fat of lambs and rams, Bashan bulls and goats, together with the choicest wheat. You drank fine wine from the blood of grapes. And of course, we can't help but think about Jesus offering a cup of wine to the disciples and saying, this is my blood. Blood up to the bridles of horses for 1,600 stadia, about 200 miles. They measured distance in stadia. We use a, the word stadium to mean an athletic venue, right? A stadium is pretty big. Imagine 1,600 of those placed end to end. That's a long, long large distance. Uh, that reflects the extent of the judgment of God. Huge. I have trodden the winepress alone, and the peoples, and from the peoples no one was with me. I trod them in my anger and trampled, trampled them in my wrath. Their juice spattered on my garments, and I stained all my robes. For the day of vengeance was in my mind, and the year for my redeeming work had come. I looked, but there was no helper. I was abandoned, and there was no one to sustain me. So my own arm brought me victory, and my wrath sustained me. I trampled down my peoples in my wrath. I crushed them in my wrath. I poured out their lifeblood on the earth. The seventh sign, finally got to the last sign here, a heavenly throne room scene. Then I saw another portent in heaven, great and amazing, seven angels with seven plagues, which were the last for with them the wrath of God is ended. And I saw what appeared to be a sea of glass mixed with fire, and those who had conquered the beast and its image and the number of its name standing beside the sea of glass with harps of God in their hands. And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb. Great and amazing are your deeds, Lord God the Almighty. Just and true are your ways, King of the nations. Lord, who will not fear and glorify your name? For you alone are holy. All the nations will come and worship before you, for your judgments have been revealed. Seven angels and seven plagues. Now, here we're getting a preview of next week, the seven bowls, uh, verse 5. We'll see how the seven angels are given seven bowls to pour out the plagues on the earth. But that's for next week. Worthy, the wrath of God is ended. It, it, it implied accomplished and fulfilled. We're coming to the end of this cycle. Remember, the revelation is in cycles with each of these sevens. Seven seals, seven trumpets, seven signs. Next week, seven bowls. Song of Moses. Maybe I'll just do one verse here. 
Most of chapter 15 is the Song of Moses. I'm not going to read the whole thing. One verse. Who is like you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in splendor, doing wonders? So this is a song of praise to God, and it concludes this cycle, the cycle of seven signs. Uh, it continues the pattern, uh, seven seals, seven trumpets, each one ending with a song of praise to God. You think when you get here, well, that must be the end of the book. <laughs> no, wait, there's more. <laughs> Don't order yet. Uh, and so next week we'll... Um, We'll talk about the seven bowls and the angels emptying the contents of their bowls, each one in turn, onto the earth. Questions, comments? Yes? Yes, it does. Yeah. I didn't know whether to introduce it this time or, or, or next week, or, but yes, it does. Yes. Uh, he is trampling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. Yeah, but maybe I'll bring that in next week. Yeah, you're right, it does. It's a battle hymn of the Republic is taken from Revelation. Correct. Okay, thank you. Oh, wait a minute, one more question. Yes. Is there any indication of when this would happen? How long this Yeah the, 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 yeah, the thing is, you can't interpret any of these times literally. It, there's, it, it would be a mistake to take this as a blueprint. So you can't, sorry, but it, you, just, you just can't do it. Yeah. Okay, all right.